Why is one of the coolest rituals in all of 40k relegated to one of the lamest factions? Yeah, I said it. Here, let me tell you about the ritual of the young king. So in Warhammer 40k, there are the Eldar, which are basically just space elves, and one of the gods they worship is Kela Mensha Cain, or Cain for short. Now, Cain is the Eldar god of war and strife, which in a setting called Warhammer means he's pretty important. He's also important because he's one of the few Eldar gods that didn't die. Or rather, he did die, but he's only mostly dead, not dead dead. The context is complicated. Basically, some space elves worship a god of war named Cain, and the ritual of the young king is how those space elves beseech Cain for aid. There's a whole lot of backstory and there's a bit more to it, but the long and short is that Eldanesh, the young king, gained the favor of the god of war and strife only to reject Cain's offer to bathe the galaxy in blood. For that, Cain killed the young king. Why does that matter? Because the way the Eldar summon Cain now is by recreating the circumstances of the young king's rejection of Cain's offer for power. See, when I said Cain is dead, but not dead dead, I wasn't joking. He got broken into a bunch of shards and scattered across the galaxy. In the modern day, or modern 40k day, the Eldar can channel their collective anger, resentment, strife into a shard of Cain they have in order to summon an avatar of Cain. And just look at it! Just ignore the fact that the Avatar of Cain is a huge pushover. In times where the Eldar need to bring out the big guns, where it's do or die and they've been doing a lot of dying already, they enact the ritual of the young king. They choose an exarch among them, or one Eldar who's entirely overcome by a single personality trait, to take on the role of Eldanesh, the young king. Male, female, or other, once they take on the role of Eldanesh, they are exclusively referred to as the young king. In a highly ceremonial ritual, the young king is stripped and runes are carved into his back to prepare him as a vessel. He is granted a gigantic spear or sword called the Suindele, or Howling Death, that will be used by the Avatar of Cain. The young king is then adorned in a cloak of flowers and a garland of flowers. Huh? The young king is then adorned in a cloak and garland of flowers. Some groups of Eldar also catch the blood running from the carved runes on the young king's back and have him take a sip of his own blood. The young king enters a closed chamber, housing the shard of Cain that the Eldar have been channeling their aggression into. There, the young king once more rejects Cain's offer of power, enraging the god of war and strife so fiercely that he inhabits his broken shard in order to strike down the young king again. Thus, the young king dies once more, and the avatar of Cain steps forth to bring death to all who oppose the Eldar. It's so cool! Why did I just rant about it? Because I thought it's cool, I'm not gonna lie. The process drips with cultural and historical references, the idea that history becomes folklore becomes tradition that ends up having an actual application, the idea that the way they bring the avatar of Cain into existence is by enraging it with the memory of Cain's greatest failing. The idea that once an exarch is chosen for the ritual, they become the young king. Not through any magic or anything, just symbolically, but how literally it's treated throughout the course of the entire ritual. I could spin this into writing advice or repackage it for a TTRPG, but I'm just going to leave this as me retelling a story about something I think is super cool. If that inspires you, awesome. If not, no worries. A bit surprising that you made it this far in the video though. That's the ritual itself, but I also think that the context surrounding who the young king is also warrants some discussion. So if that interests you, stay tuned. Many, many years ago at the dawn of Eldar society, there was this one elf named Eldanesh, the young king. Eldanesh was a great leader, diplomat, role model, and above all, warrior. In these early days of Eldar society, they were constantly fighting losing battles, even with Eldanesh's expertise. Eventually though, he began working with the Eldar's second greatest warrior, Ulthanesh. In the beginning, things were great. Eldanesh and Ulthanesh began winning those losing battles. They became closer and stronger as a team, nearly uniting their disparate noble houses and Eldar society as a whole. Then they reached foes they could not surmount on their own. And so, in times of war, they turned to Kela Menchakain, the god of war. Or perhaps he found them? It's unclear. What is clear is that with Kane's assistance, the two greatest warriors of the Eldar destroyed all who opposed them. In war, they were unmatched and in peace, they brought war. So deep did the blessing of Cain run that they found their very personality shifting to better suit the deity. They became the first Exarchs, which for an Eldar is basically when a single personality trait takes over your entire life. Many different types of Exarchs exist in Eldar society, and most of them aren't even seen as entirely negative. That's why even in the modern day, new Exarchs are chosen to become the Young King in the Ritual of the Young King. 
But what happens when the two greatest warriors of your people are twisted to know nothing but war and strife? They turned on one another. Eldenesh took it better than Ulthanesh, where he better retained his sense of self. So instead of killing one another as Cain wanted them to, Eldenesh settled for banishing Ulthanesh. Cain was displeased by this and attempted to kill Ulthanesh in his exile in order to effectively blame Eldenesh for his death. If Ulthanesh died due to Eldenesh banishing him, there would be a civil war in the Eldar, and the god of war and strife would be very happy indeed. Surprisingly, Ulthanesh survived Cain's attempt to kill him, and basically came back and told Eldenesh you're not the boss of me, and brought about his own civil war with Blackjack and Hookers. Cain was pleased by this, even more so when Eldenesh took the betrayal of his once closest friend and sorted his emotions out by annihilating every enemy he came across. Cain approached Eldenesh and effectively offered to make him a demigod. Eldenesh would be empowered with the blessings of the god of war and strife to bring death to the entire galaxy. He could overcome Ulthanesh. He could overcome any of the myriad alien species they'd not even encountered yet. But even as an exarch who was overcome with bloodlust, Eldenesh realized that this wasn't who he wanted to be. So in defiance of the literal god of war and strife, Eldenesh told Cain no and Cain responded by murdering Eldenesh. So yeah, that's the story of Eldenesh and the context for the Ritual of the Young King. Obviously, I truncated a bunch, such as Cain's killing of Eldenesh being an act of God interfering with mortals, and what consequences that brought. Or how a lot of Eldar creation myths are reminiscent of real-life creation myths. The Eldar's head god Asurian breathed life into the Eldar, creating them alone in the universe. The goddess of fertility Isha then shed a tear for the Eldar's isolation, creating other forms of life. It's all very cool, which upsets me because I think the Eldar are lame. But I suppose a broken clock is right twice a day. And if leaf lovers have a point or two, it's because of their ears. Have fun!